Did the government suddenly become good and righteous and full of just conscientious men and women who would never do anything wrong like this? <laughs>
you take commission for fundraising. You don't demand an hourly rate. If you're really confident, if you really care about the organization you're supposed to be working for, there was the Strat 4 leak from Wiki, WikiLeaks where he was named and he gave a plausible answer for denying it, but a lot of people think still that he somehow has some connection to some intelligence operations of covert, subversive, unethical nature because of this. He was listed with his, with his name as someone who purchased one of their intelligence reports. He said that he got it as a subscription for his brother shady but plausible i think was the the general consensus uh, around that he's been the chair of the libertarian party now for three cycles and i don't i don't see a smoking gun here about nick i don't i want i still want to give him absolutely and, and everybody on the lnc the benefit of the doubt but to think that on the libertarian national committee there isn't someone who's been compromised. I don't want to be specific here. I don't want to say is an infiltrator, is a plant. No, we don't know. But that if we are any kind of, if we are who we say we are as a party, and we are taking on the duopoly, and I'm talking about these old parties who have annual budgets, what, in the hundreds of millions of dollars? And if you add up all the money that goes to their candidates, billions of dollars? You think they don't have a little room and all that money for a little black ops in their budgets? Oh yeah. And if you were one of the major sponsors of the Republicans and Democrats, if you were chairman of the Federal Reserve, say, or one of the great moneyed families of the world, and you wanted the Republicans and Democrats to stay in power, wouldn't you be disappointed if these people who you were hiring to kill innocent people, to lock up innocent people, to steal from the entire country on their behalf. Wouldn't you be disappointed if they weren't taking appropriate security precautions and keeping those goddamn libertarians out of the way too? Oh yeah. I wanna be very careful whether or not to point fingers at any individuals, but talking about not Nick Sarwark does get us to the next point in this narrative that we are going to cover today at least there are many points in between of course 1971 and Adam Kokesh launches his bid for the libertarian presidential nomination and I got pulled over twice within an hour of announcing then detained for 10 days on illegal drug charges that I later beat down to a citation basically of $180 yeah Four felonies and a misdemeanor goes down to a $180 fine. You don't think there's some element of political harassment tied up in that story? So to Joshua Smith, who I mentioned is, is another personal friend of mine uh, and who I am at the, I no, no reason so far. I mean, I, nobody's perfect. Josh has done plenty of things that I agree with and disagree with uh, in the last term as a member of the Libertarian National Committee. And, uh, you know, over one little thing that we can talk about, I certainly would have no reason to, to withdraw my endorsement of him. I still believe that he would be the best chair of the current candidates to be uh, the figurehead, the leader, the, the chairman of the Libertarian National Committee. And going back on his, well, I should say a couple other, uh, well, other interesting you know, backstories here with the candidates who have run against me so far in the primary with the Mises caucus. Follow the money. Yeah. We're not going to get too far to the Mises caucus right now. We'll see if it comes up again later in this conversation, but look into the Mises caucus. Maybe we'll come back and we'll, we'll maybe we'll get into that in another segment. Looking at Jacob Hornberger. Looking at Judge Jim Gray slash Larry Sharp coming into the race very suspiciously late with a handful of key endorsements from party leadership. Despite their weaknesses. Now, uh, let me put it to you like this, and I'll, I'll give just Justin Amash a lot of credit here. 
there are really only five of us who have any business being considered as serious candidates for the Libertarian Party nomination, who have any kind of track record of successful messaging. Now, I'm not saying other candidates shouldn't run. I'm just pointing out that it's kind of a fantasy to think that someone who's had no serious success as a Libertarian messenger is suddenly going to become successful because they're the Libertarian nominee. So, sorry, Jacob Hornberger is not one of these five. Judge Jim Gray is not one of these five. No record of success. Popular among libertarians. And I like both of them personally. And honestly, I would prefer either of them. Well, between Gray and Amash, maybe it's a toss up. But I would, I would say this, and I'll say this in a heartbeat. I would withdraw from the race today if it meant that Jacob Hornberger would be the nominee instead of Justin Amash. Far better for the party, far better for the cause, far better for the movement. If that's the result of me running, hey, I am more than happy to have put the time in here. So the five, myself, John McAfee, Justin Amash, Vermin Supreme, and John Wands for his electoral success getting votes as a governor candidate in Georgia. That's it. Anybody else is, is, is saying some kind of fantasy. Now, there are also some fantasies around nominating Justin Amash. That suddenly someone who's going on TV multiple times, we're going to get to a CNN interview today as well, where he actually categorized armed protesters with Nazis and condemned people for protesting while armed, despite it being legal, that suddenly, if he's the Libertarian Party nominee, he's going to start talking about libertarianism. <laughs> I want to ask you no. about these protests. Or, or that the Libertarian Party is not going to have to apologize for all of his anti-freedom positions. Or that he's just going to leave as every other washed-up Republican candidate has. Or that the mainstream media, who loves supporting him in the primary for the Libertarian Party, isn't going to suddenly turn on him and bash him or ignore him when it gets to the general election. So there was a Libertarian National Committee meeting on Saturday. And it was a very close vote. And I got a credit here for the post by Kenny Kelly, who summarized the meeting. And I'm getting this from Joshua Smith's page, and it lists all of the participants. And uh, CJ, if you want to show everybody what this looks like, a Zoom Brady Bunch panel that is uh, a four by five participants here. It was, uh, it was, it was quite a cluster, but uh, the important thing here is that there was a vote, uh, a move to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate date and or location to be chosen by the LNC to a physical location to take place no later than July 15, 2020 with the decision by the LNC made within 10 days from today by electronic meeting. So this was so this was really interesting. And I encourage you, if you want to go back and watch this, Nick Sarwark at the end, after really being a dick to like we had two people, we were watching here at the Garden of Freedom on on the uh on the patio with a number of other libertarian uh, party members and two people who had never heard of the Libertarian Party committee, had no idea, they knew what the LP was, but no idea anything. They, they were listening to me going, who's this Nick guy? He's a real dick. Right. Like, there's no idea about his background, nothing. And then towards the end of the meeting, Nick makes the case for virtual voting, that we have to have an online convention. And he loses, barely, and is actually told procedurally he's not allowed to vote. Loses by two votes. It was nine to seven, very close. Now, he walked out. He was actually at a loss for words. Someone else had to adjourn the meeting. The chair so lost his I'm composure yep. that he had to literally, he didn't even turn off his camera and make it look like he just got caught. He could have done that. He walked off screen. Someone else had to, I mean, just this is now not a smoking gun, not proof in and of itself. Then the next day, bylaws committee meeting, Nick is there again, Nick Sarwar, again, pushing the possibility of a virtual vote, a digital convention. And then today, so we won. 
We were cheering on, yes, we won. We're going to have a physical convention. We will not have the corruption of a digital vote. And then Joshua Smith yesterday announces, many of us on the LNC just came together on an agreement to hold our POTUS VP nominations by electronic balloting June 6 to 7. So I and others worked on a motion for the Saturday meeting. Uh, yada, yada, yada. They would leave all other business for the in-person convention, but have the POTUS and VP nominations digitally. Kind of defeats the point, if you ask me. We cannot allow this to happen. And what is so disappointing in all of this is that we see on the LNC even, and I saw this from Nick and actually personally went back and forth with them a little bit by text message to say, look, this is this is not a, the pandemic that the government says it is. This is a hoax. There is a real thing here. Ron Paul was right when he called it a hoax. And I beat him to it by a month, by the way. February 1st, that was the title of Adam versus the Man podcast. The coronavirus hoax. Not that the virus itself isn't real, but that the crisis is a hoax. A pandemic. So, to hear people who call themselves libertarians not questioning government repeating the fear mongering to the point where they're saying we couldn't possibly have an in-person convention we can't do social distancing we're not essential personnel freedom of speech protest organizing for the libertarian that's not we can't make accommodations we can't go to the effort we can't stand up to this trump emergency order the way that most americans now are already the way that paddleboarders and protesters and surfers and skateboarders are coming out as civil and mothers in parks with their children are coming out in defiance and the libertarian party can't even have an in-person convention are you fucking kidding me